Welcome back, and in my last Q&A video, someone asked me to do a video on some affordable options to some popular knives or hard to get knives. So that's what this video is gonna be. First up, we have the Chris Reeve knives, Sabenza 21 or 31, doesn't matter. And uh, one option would be your right P801. You have the similar lines. Now, of course, it's not gonna be at a cut as long as, say, this blade, but I wouldn't expect it to. This is an expensive knife. This one's like $32, I think, and this one's actually gonna be a little bit slicier because you have full flat grind that comes down a little bit thinner than the Sabenza. This one still handles 14C28 in on this one, S35 on this one. Uh, you both have frame locks, and this one also has a flipper tab. Uh, one more option, similar blade shape, would be the Best Tech Man Dundee. Now, this one is flipper only, so it just depends on what you're looking for. Now, I will have links in the description. Next up, we have the Koenig Knives Arius. Of course, this is an expensive knife, and it's a very hard knife to get. Uh, I was able to pick one up at Blade Show. It's about the only way I'd have been able to pick it up. But they do have something that's similar, and that is the Kubi Knives Tidius. It's got, you know, a similar blade. It's, it's a, one of those broad blades, and it has an excellent action. Um, this one is the flipper and thumb hole, so you get that same thumb hole, and Koenig also makes a flipper as well. This one has excellent action. Not as good as this one, but I think it could definitely scratch the itch. Um... This particular one's like $40 or something like that. It's D2 steel, G10, tip-up, uh, left or right-handed deep care pocket clip. And this one's a titanium frame lock with a milled tie clip. Now, <laughs> um, they also have come out with one of these with titanium scales. That would be a little bit more similar um, to the Koenig that has all tie. Uh, but it's going to cost you, I think it's like a hundred bucks. So if you don't want to spend that much and you want, you know, that somewhat similar feel, then I would say go with the tidiest, uh, in D2. Number three, we have the Olamic Knives Busker Semper. Um, mine has been reground, but you get the picture. These are, you know, pricey little knives. Something that could scratch that itch as far as, you know, multi-deploying with that front flipper, whoop, front flipper and um, a means to flip it with the thumb would be the CJRB Malia. You have that front flipper. You have the same kind of similar feel and hand. Um, at least this one's a little bit smaller, and I think the more Malia is a little bit bigger. This is kind of more similar to that other blade shape they have, but, you know, if you're looking for something small, you know, two and a half, three finger grip knife with a front flipper. You know, I think this is a good little option. You have the ARPM9 stainless steel on this one. G10 scales and a reversible deep carry pocket clip. Uh, yeah, I've used and abused this knife and I've enjoyed this knife. <laughs> Next knife is the TRM Shadow. Another very hard knife to get. And the replacement would be the CMB Knives Predator. You know, it's not the exact same blade shape, but it's a broad blade. You have about the same belly as the Shadow, and they're about the same overall length. I beat my Shadow up in the actual review. If you hadn't seen that, go check that out. That was a long time ago. But it can handle some abuse, and they both have the crossbar lock. This one fills out the hand a little bit better because it's a little bit thicker, but the shadow is no slouch and you can choke up on the shadow. Shadow might be a little bit slicier just because you have the thinner blade stock, but this one comes down thinner behind the edge. It just thicken, it'll thicken up a little bit quicker. So you're still gonna get a nice slicey blade, nice tough blade with that crossbar lock. Uh, you can get these in 14C28N. This one's a D2 variation, but uh, either one, both of them good knives. Next up, we have the Tactile Rockwall. Uh, this one I enjoy because of its slim, sleek nature. Uh, you know, nice, easy to carry EDC knife. And <laughs> one that is also like that is the Horn Win. You got pretty much the same handle profile as far as like, uh, you know, slim, streamlined nature. And you have about the same exact overall length. Now, the Wind is a flipper. Um, and this particular rock wall is a flipper, but I don't know if they still do the flipper. I think they only do the thumb stud now, but you know, flipper to flipper is pretty close. 
and the, the point's a little bit higher on the win, but you know, this one's a very, very affordable knife. This is in 14C28N, and uh, yeah, I've been having this one for quite a while. Next up, we have the Wheat Knives Xyphius. This one's a pretty pricey one because they did the integral uh, backspacer thing, and it has some pretty amazing action, comfortable, and it has a pretty wicked looking Warncliffe blade. But like I said, pretty darn pricey. They're, I think you still get them, but you know, they're probably out of most people's, a lot of people's uh, price range. But in that same family, you have the Sin Cut Watuga, also a button lock. You can get it in G10 Micarta. Excellent action and very, very similar in overall profile. The Xyphius is a bigger knife, as you can see. But if you're looking for a cool looking Warncliffe, button lock and then there you go they're both uh flipper deployers and you can also uh use the fuller on this one to thumb flick it reverse flick it and you can do the same with that uh thumb stud on the xyphius blade steel on this one is d2 and like i said it's a highly highly affordable knife uh minuscule of the price of the xyphius next we have another koenig and this is the koenig mini goblin very hard one to get because they don't produce that. I don't, they, they had a few of them at Blade Show, but I don't see them dropping these uh, all too often. And there's a knife that looks a lot alike, in my opinion. It's a little bit bigger, but this is the Kaiser uh, VK1FL. And uh, they even have a Best Tech version of this that is smaller, so it'd be more similar to the uh, Koenig Knives Mini Goblin. Now, I do realize that this particular one, I think it's like 160 bucks, so it's not super affordable. Uh, but I do have a more affordable option, except it's not a flipper. This is a very, very affordable option. This one is coming from Flissa, and I don't think it has a name, but like I said, I will link it down below. And it has that, you know, same drop right there. And that very aggressive tip, and they're about the same uh, overall length. So, depending on what you're looking for, you know, something that looks more like it, I would go with the the VK1 uh, FL. If you're looking for about the same size with that aggressive point, then the Flissa. Super super affordable knife. You get the crossbar lock, and look at this beautiful action and it makes some clanking noises that i like d2 steel on this one this one's an s35 vm with titanium scales g10 uh this one is a tip up right hand carry only just like the kaiser and just like the kona goblin next up we have the spartan farsi holder the full size one these are extremely heavy duty knives hard use knives whatever you want to call them so i thought a better a good budget option to a knife that in my opinion is probably stronger than this one and that would be the cold steel air light because it has the triad lock <laughs> um, I don't know about you know side to side strength but up and down I think the air light would definitely have this one beat but you know they have that similar uh, sweep in the blade of course the full size horsey is a, a, a monster of a knife it's it's like I think it's got a four inch blade on it and it's uh, I think nine inches overall so you're not going to get that same you know size reference in the uh the air light but toughness category you'll get it here blade steel in the air light is AUS 10A and cold steel does an excellent job with it two more to go next up we have the Monterey Bay Knives Sea Otter <laughs> and you yeah, have these come and go so very fast because they're made in the U.S. and they're making them in-house in California so you know they're not making huge batches of these so I, I do understand people would love to have something that was you know had some similar attributes to it and I think the Kaiser original um, has you know that it's it's pretty much the same exact overall length you have about that same belly as the uh, sea otter but you're just not getting the same materials. You got Magna Cut in here, 154 cm aluminum on this one, titanium. This one's a button lock. This one's a frame lock. So you got about the same size overall, about the same feel in hand, because uh, you got that same choil area pretty much in the same spot. You know, pretty uh, close of the silhouette. 
Lastly, we have this Chris Reeve Knives Sabenza 31 with the Insingo blade shape. And this is the small, um, you know, I, I love the Insingo blade shape. I think it's a very useful blade shape. And it has that perfect amount of belly to it. The thing, the only knife I could find that came a little bit close to it in size and shape would be the Kaiser Feist with the drop point blade. You have similar uh, overall handle area right there, grip area. As you can see, it stops right there. So you have about the same grip area as the small 21. And you have about that same exact belly almost as the uh, Insingo blade on it. Now, you know, of course, they're different looking and, you know, different overall uh, tolerances, but both of them good knives. And like I said, one of them is a lot more expensive than the other one. Boop. So there you go. That's some some of my uh, options that I that I found. If you have any good options of some popular knives, let us know down in the comments. Uh, I'm always interested to see those. And you never know if I don't have it, I might even try it out. Uh, it just helps out people in the community. You know, I know not everybody can spend four, five, eight, nine, ten, hundred dollars on a knife. I get it. Um, it took me a while before I could I could buy a knife like this. I had to do a lot of selling of knives and trading and other stuff like that uh, to be able to actually afford something like that. So I I understand, and I was always looking for you know an affordable option that could kind of get me there at least until i could afford it or maybe never afford it so if you have any questions comments concerns please leave them down below i hope everybody's having an absolute amazing day i will see y'all on the next one Peace.